The dust has settled. Now on Tesla's RoboTaxi event, happened in Warner Brothers Studio. Elon started the chat, entered the chat by hopping in his all new cyber cab. We'll break that vehicle down today on whether I think it'll be successful or not. Robotaxi and autonomous driving for Tesla is either the future and they'll be wildly successful with it or it's going to fizzle out and they may not have as long as the future as a company as many people thought. Tesla doesn't even identify as an automotive brand anymore. They identify more as an AI company, autonomous mobility company in some ways. So today we're going to break down the recent We Robot celebration party where they unveiled Elon unveiled uh, the cyber cab, um, the, the robo van, the robo van, as well as uh, showing off some cool party tricks with Optimus, their uh, Terminator like robots. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Kirk. I cover automotive news in the industry. When Tesla has big events like this, it always makes a splash. This one is light on details, heavy on hype. Um, and you could say that it's a lot of Tesla, um, you know, media events and introductions of new vehicles and things like that. That's true. But I feel like this one is exceptionally light on details and, uh, and timelines and things like that. So we're going to break this down. Um, the full event, I'm going to share my thoughts on if this is a good or bad thing for Tesla. This is my second time recording. I'm still, and everyone in Florida is still dealing with in some ways, uh, the after effects of hurricane Milton. So my first recording, I was pretty much done with it power went out, lost the file. So fingers crossed this time, we will be able to make it to the end. And I have to be maybe a little bit more brief than I would like to be in order to be the, uh, to, to maybe make it in front of the next power cut. God willing, it doesn't happen. All right. So Elon strolls in and his new cyber cam, no one had expected it to be a coupe, um, with no controls, no steering wheel, no pedals. Um, there were 20 cyber cabs at the event. They were on a predetermined path for autonomous driving demo rides for the, um, the investors that were there or just the Tesla fans. All right. And they went around Warner Brothers Studios. People were just either really excited for it or it's saying like, wait, this is all you have to offer. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say below, but maybe hold your thoughts until I'm done breaking this down. So 20 new cyber cabs were there, 30 additional Model 3 and Model Ys for a total of 50 vehicles that were all autonomous running through the loop at the event. Tesla claims that modern transportation costs too much, which I agree with. It's not sustainable, which it's probably true, but you know, how far into the future is it unsustainable? Who knows? It's not safe, he says. What is safe? So what autonomous driving provides for me compared to standard drive your own car transportation is I get my time back. So if I have to drive to Tampa for an event or Orlando or whatever it is, I can check out, hang out with the family, do work. Yeah, you just have your time back to you. You have your own private lounge. And that idea sounds amazing. And if you can sell that idea and market that idea and execute on that idea, Tesla is not going anywhere if autonomous driving pans out in the time frame they say it does. Now, what is that time frame? Well, 2025 Model 3s and Model Ys, Elon claims will be hands-free, eyes-free, attention-free, full self-driving. In 2025, it's rolling out in Texas and California and Europe if they can get away with it there with the laws and whatnot. My questions on it is if it does come that early, is it going to be safe? If you are trusting a vehicle to do everything for you, you want it to be safe with only cameras as your sensors on the vehicle. To my understanding, I don't believe Tesla has, I know for sure it doesn't have LiDAR. Uh, that's what a lot of manufacturers are investing in because it's, um, it's an extremely powerful and useful technology, but it is expensive. Tesla, well, we know they like cutting costs. So LiDAR did not make the menu on autonomous driving. So I'm worried about the safety of these autonomous vehicles in the rain, the snow, the fog, bad conditions. I'm just, I'm not sold on it. I would have to see it uh, to believe it, but it is what it is. Let's keep moving. And he says like these vehicles are gonna be way more safe. These autonomous vehicles are way more safe than uh, the average human driving. 
because Tesla's compiling all the data from all their cars, especially the ones that use full self-driving, they're compiling all that data. You're, so if, you, if you use a Tesla, I mean, any modern car, you're compiling data for the automaker for their own ends. Um, so Tesla's using that data to make full self-driving a reality, hopefully in the near future for them. So 2025, by the end of 2025, we should have it in Model 3s, Model Ys. The CyberCab won't be out until 2027 at the latest. So he said before 2027, CyberCab should be out and it should be purchasable for about $30,000 or less. The thing is, there's no steering wheel or pedals. I think it's really going to limit its desirability. And you might be saying, Kirk, well, if you need a steering wheel pedals, let's get a Model 3, Model Y, because those are still going to be autonomous. But the coupe is quite cool looking. I'll give it that. The butterfly doors are cool from an enthusiast aspect. I like the design. I like the doors flipping up. I mean, there's no rear window in the cargo area. Um, and there's, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to have a, a Tesla baby Roadster before the Roadster comes out, but there's no human operation. So it's going to not succeed for a lot of people out there. And it's not going to be the right vehicle for 99% of people out there because of the lack of human interaction or human override. To me, I want a vehicle I can interact with when I want to interact with and or just say, hey, go, uh, let's go to the kid's school and the vehicle will navigate there safely by itself. That sounds amazing, to be honest. It sounds like, hey, I can get my time back while I'm picking up the kids or doing grocery shopping or whatever it is. But without human override, I'm, I'm not, I can't, I couldn't buy a, a product like that. So the Model 3, Model Y will still be the main draws to the company going forward. And you can do full self-driving, Elon said, on the Cybertruck, the X and S, but I don't think he gave a timeline for that. Uh, he also says this is, you know, if you do cars like this, it's more affordable than mass tra transit. The math he, he made did not make sense to me. He said it costs the city bus a dollar per mile to operate. The cyber cab is 20 cents per mile, ideally, to operate, but a bus can fit 30 people or so. So that's about three cents per person per mile, where best case scenario on the other end for the cyber cab is about 20 cents or 10 cents per person per mile. So it is it is more expensive to run a cyber cab than a city bus, just for the sheer fact that you can fit so many more people on a bus, all right? Oh, inductive charging. So you can charge these vehicles wirelessly. Do you guys know of anywhere you can charge your vehicle wirelessly? I know the future is charging your vehicles wirelessly inside your garage or in your driveway. That sounds pretty cool. Just put a mat down that's plugged in so you don't have to constantly be nannying the plug-in to the vehicle. That sounds really idyllic, but I don't know if there's anything out there that exists like that quite yet. Um, parking lots. Well, he, 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 he with, with, especially with the, the robots and autonomous driving, he says, we will have a utopia of, of abundance. These robots will boost our, their, our economy, but how are people going to get money is my question. If no one has jobs because of these robots, where, how are we going to provide a living for ourselves? Unless we put the robots to work, but all the robots will probably be bought out by these mega companies that have a monopoly on these robots. And anyways, it's a weird, it's just a weird, there's so many questions. It's so far out sci-fi. He says everyone will be able to own one of these robots for 20, 30 grand. And you use your imagination. You ask the robot to do anything for you and it'll do it for better or worse, right? That sounds like it could be quite dangerous or quite helpful, just like any tool. Um, but these things are, are not dumb, right? They're, they're highly intelligent in theory. Uh, robots, humanoid robots. So we've seen this story before. We all know how it ends. I'm okay with never seeing a humanoid robot as somebody's friend. The big, the big excitement for me was the robo van. And then I learned it didn't have a steering wheel or pedal. So robo van can fit about 20 people. You can equip it to be, um, a goods hauler. Um, it, the design of it was inspired by art deco trains. It looks like a like a Daft Punk helmet or an Iron Man face sort of thing. Um, but it has no windshield. It has no doors for the front driver because there is no front driver. So super far-fetched vehicle that would need tons of revision to make it drivable, which is the only way it's going to be sold. Like if you're, if you're a business person and let's say you're a carpenter, a painter or a plumber, electrician, 
and you would like to have something like a robo van, you're SOL, in my opinion, because you can't control it yourself and drive into specific situations yourself. I would, I'm a big van guy, so I would love to see the robo van like a consumer product instead of a mass transit sort of product. Anyways, uh, robo van was kind of a miss for me. Let's see here. At the end, the, the robots were dancing to Robot Rock from Daft Punk, dancing to Hathaway, What is Love? The next line in that song is, Baby, Don't Hurt Me. That's what I'm thinking about when you have these intelligent robots running around controlling society. Uh, rest of the live stream was fans getting in the cyber cab, taking on a ride around Universal Studios. I call it Universal Studios. That's what it equates to in my head. Warner Brothers Studios. It's it's a fabricated city uh, for movie and TV show sets. So yeah, back to cyber cab because this thing is supposed to be coming and by the end of 2026. I just don't see how it's an effective cab. Um, if it was a, a small minivan, like if you go to Japan, minivans are everywhere. They're the most useful product for moving people or things. They're just not always the most sexy. So why isn't the cyber cab this small boxy autonomous little thing you can do anything with? The cyber cab, unless you have controls in it, hand controls, why would you want one? It's very limited with its functionality. We don't know anything about range. We don't know anything about charging rates. We don't know anything about single motor or dual motor. We know nothing. And it really doesn't matter in my opinion because you can't drive it. And I don't want to V why would I buy a $30,000 vehicle? I can't drive at least some of the time, but I understand some, some of you guys out there maybe don't care to drive. And this channel is probably not for you because I review cars and tell you what cars are like to drive the things that are good, the things that are bad. And if I can't control the car, oh my gosh, I can't imagine reviewing a cyber cab. If you guys want me to definitely put it down in the comments down below when it comes to the market. Cause yeah, anyways, let's keep moving the cyber cab. It's just not practical for a cab. You go to Japan. Like I said, I just came back from Japan. So it's fresh in my mind. You look at Toyota's, the, the newest cab that they have they called the Japan taxi. It's a Prius. It's super tall, um, essentially, and it has sliding doors like a minivan, so it's easy to get in and out of, and it has a high seat height. You're talking about a coupe doesn't work for 98% of people out there, and I know it's for most people it's just going to be a, a point A to point B, but it's like people, I mean, it's not going to be easy for the average person, especially old people, to get in and out of a tiny coupe. I don't know. It's just, it's just clunky to me. And the door should slide backwards instead of these butterfly doors. Like if you have this cab, you don't want the doors at risk of getting lopped off because the cab doesn't realize there's a car coming or puts itself in a less than ideal situation. If you have doors that only pop out a couple inches on each side, like a minivan, that solves the problem and also makes it more functional. There's nothing very functional about this cyber cab. I'm very disappointed with, with the overall presentation of it. Yeah, there's only two seats of it uh, on it and it should have four to five, right? Shouldn't a cab have four to five seats? It seems a big, like a big waste of space, okay? Um, if you only have two seats in the vehicle, why don't you make it something like something tiny, like a, a little smart 4-2 or whatever those smart cars were? I don't know. It's it's there to, to, to get people's attention, I feel like. I don't think this vehicle is going to be a success for Tesla. Uh, yeah, with, I mean, that's about it. Without more concrete details, without a functional cab, without a van that's also functional or available at any time in the future. We don't know about the robo van, but without human controls to, to drive the car yourself, uh, to me, I don't, I don't understand. Maybe I'm just not, I'm not getting on the full belief of the, the hands free, eyes free, attention free, full self driving by next year. I just don't believe it and I would never trust it. So I'll see you guys down below. I want this stuff to work because like I said, you get your time back when you're driving if you don't want to be driving in your vehicle at that specific time. Like how amazing you're driving. I like to be in control when I'm driving, obviously. And let's say I get an important email, an important text. I can just put autopilot on and get to my work, whatever. I can put autopilot on, 
mess around with the climate control or the radio stations. And then when I'm ready to, or I don't like how the car is driving, I can take over, decide to go a different way or whatever. But without those controls, it is a one trick pony. Um, and I think that's really going to limit its desirability and its its sales if the cyber cab goes on sale without controls if the robovan ever goes on sale there is no mention of an app to hail these autonomous teslas i mean and you in this utopic vision of elon you can let's say uh rent your car out at night where you don't need to drive it you don't need it for yourself or your own needs so you just leave it in your driveway and um you say hey uh i'm going to make some money by shelling my car out as a ride service for people who who would like to use an uber slash lyft but there's no mention of how a tesla autonomous vehicle would interact with an uber or a lyft and i can't imagine the insurance can you imagine the insurance on a fully autonomous car i don't see how it would be cost effective to own one of these things anyways i gotta shut it down there thank you guys for watching i'll i'll see you in the comments you guys will probably come up with much greater ideas much grander conclusions than i myself can even though i review cars i i not i can't see every angle here so I want to see you guys comment down below pro or against uh, this autonomous vehicle technology from Tesla. And um, yeah, it's just unfortunate we got no word of a more affordable Tesla, which a lot of people were excited for. We got no word of a new Model 3 or, or a refreshed Model Y, for example. I'll see you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.